Welcome to Crochet ADHD. I'm your host, Jackie. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. You're a one hit wonder. I'm so happy you're here. If you are a repeat offender, a member of the Glam Fam, you can learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle up. <laughs> Today's episode is, what is it? Oh, it is the July LP. Everything I did, everything I wanted to do, everything I tried to do in the month of July. I'll go ahead and just tell you this. Not a lot was done. As usual, I have my trusty dusty notebook. Wait, before we get started, Miss Hetty would like to say hello. She's actually a little upset with the, the new arrangement of this room, mainly all of the stuff that is immediately behind her because it blocks her beauty. Her words, not mine. She is wearing a shawl that I made. I believe I made it in 2022. Hmm. Maybe it was 2020. Yeah, I don't remember. It is the Tunisian spiral shawl by Mikey from the crochet crowd. It is a super simple pattern. If you know how to do Tunisian knit stitch and how to do decreases in Tunisian crochet, you can make this. It is asymmetrical super easy, super mindless, and I was on a kick with those for a little while. As for me, my shawl is, oh, I made this last year for the Doctor Who 60th anniversary make-along that I hosted, and it's just, you know, the granny stitch shawl, and the yarn, it is We Crochet Static, I don't remember the original colorway, but I know that they re-released this yarn with different name. And I do believe the new name is Unsolved. You know, they did like an 80s theme and this is like Unsolved from Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, I believe that this is what that is. So I'm sitting on top of the air conditioner because that's just how things go. I apologize for the noise that's probably being picked up in the microphone. <laughs> first thing on my list are my squares for the hip to be square now which i am hosting it is a year-long make-along you make two squares knit crochet sew whatever way you can construct two squares it counts So I use my calendar inspiration for one square and I use Judy's bird calendar inspiration, Judy from Judy's Creations and Crochet. She's also doing a year long color inspiration make along. I made a bonus one because again, I'm extra and then I made a bonus bonus one. Unfortunately, I cannot remember which square goes with which. So I'm just going to show you all four. So here's one, two, three, and four. All right, my next finished object is the project that I made for Shark Week. The Shark Week challenge is you pick a project and you take one week to finish it. If you don't finish it, you have to on camera frog it. Well, and I finished it with, ooh, with two days to spare. So I'm really proud of myself. I used the Which Way Filet Crochet pattern by Fiber Spider. I will link uh, the pattern down below. It is a YouTube tutorial. I absolutely love how this came out. I'm not a blanket maker, and this is what the second blanket I've made this year, and both both of them have just blown me away. I love how in the middle where the cream and the gray 
meat. It kind of looks like sharks when they're like circling their victim. <laughs> I just, ugh. honestly, I would love to see if there's a way to make a shawl using that same design. As I was working on it, I really, I didn't really see, you know, the, the changing of the direction of the fillet. But then when I laid it out, yeah, it was, yeah. So I do have to thank my bestie, Denisha. She's a loyal glam famer. Uh, she's the one that sort of introduced me to the pattern. She had just made one and I saw it on her Instagram and I was like, oh yes, yeah, have to. So thanks, bestie. Next is the Tony shawl that I don't have anymore. I think I have a photo and if so, I'll pop it in here. Otherwise, no, I'll pop it in here. And if I don't have the photo, next up is the Holly shawl. Again, a shawl I made for a friend named Holly. I really, really, I think I need a 12 step program. It's me and these granny stitches, it's just, woo. I mean, I could stop if I want to. I just don't want to. Also, I am kind of looking to, and you know what? And you'll see when I get to my um, whips, you'll, you'll see that I'm, I'm kind of moving away from that, kinda. And my last FO is, no. Now I know what you're thinking. Daddy, you already finished that. Aha, uh -huh. but I didn't. Since Not Hetty and I have been doing all of this yarn rearranging and stash fluffing and all of that, I had found little the ends of some other skeins and whatnot. And they were green or green-esque, green adjacent. So I added on. And now it is finished. It will be blocked. And it will be massive. I'm going to measure what it is unblocked and then what it is blocked. Oh, gosh. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. And that was all of my FOs for July. Next up. Whips. Okay, I'm just going to bump over a couple of these because mm, um, my challenge top that I'm doing with uh, Lenann from Nina's Knots Crochet, where we're converting a knit pattern, a knit top pattern into a Tunisian crochet pattern. Didn't touch it. Nothing to show. Next, my scrap granny shawl. I'm using all of the scraps left over from my fingering weight projects this year i'm actually a little behind a few things that i have been working on i have not added well the current project i'm working on i haven't added the scraps to this yet here's where my stitch marker is right here as if that was the last place i was i was when i last showed it to you just i don't know that seems a little high up that's not right. I didn't move it from the month before. So I think somewhere around here, like where the orange, like right, right here, I think that's where I was last month. And then I've added this uh, in July. Random scraps, but I'm going to move it right now so we can do this together. And then maybe next month, I won't be confused. Huh. Oh, I remember I found a box of scrap sock yarn, 10 grams or less of sock yarn. So I just grabbed it and started adding it in. Oh my, those colors. That's great. Next would be the AI shawl. So that is the shawl that I had chat GPT generate a pattern for Tunisian crochet shawl. I have decided that I'm going to frog it. It's just not 
bring him any joy. Another thing that I never even got to tell you about that is also being X'd out is y'all may or may not know this, but not Hetty is a Swifty. Not Hetty is a humongous Swifty. I don't know if there's like Swifty, Swiftier, Swiftiest. I don't know, you know, how that whole thing works. But if that is how you were to conjugate a Swifty, she is the Swiftiest. So when the Taylor Swift dress blew up all over the internet, I got my hands on a free pattern for the dress and immediately grabbed my hook and took to it. And I was, yes, this is amazing. And then I realized I didn't have enough yarn. And of course the yarn I was using is discontinued, so I can't go out and get another one. The same place that I got the Swifty dress pattern from, she, that same designer created a Sailor Swift dress inspired top. I need to look and see what the yardage requirements are for that. So maybe I can, and this is an aside because, you know, this is crochet ADHD. And of course, if there's no ADHD, what's the pur purpose in watching? I just found out that Lee, is it Satori? I can't remember her username. I'll put it right here. She is, she just finished designing a Taylor Swift crochet pattern book. Aside from my daughter being the swiftiest of swifties my daughter's friend is also the swiftiest of swifties and she's a crocheter it wasn't on my bingo card this year but apparently i'm pre-ordering the taylor swift crochet book that is my whips <laughs> I lied. I left one off. I have started on my I Love the 80s Make Along project. I'm calling, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Instead of using a vintage pattern or vintage yarns, I, for some reason, when I saw these yarns together, the song popped in my head. If you're struggling to figure out a project to make for this Make Along, you can always grab inspiration from an 80s song or an 80s movie title or an 80s TV show. I'm not, I'm saying if it has 1980 somewhere, anywhere in its iteration, it's fair game and you can do it. All right. With that being said, I guess that's why they call it the blues premiere. Ta -da! Ooh, pretty. Now, as I look at this, so this is, a, okay, let me, let me just start. It is a, a fade ombre. I don't, I, I never remember the words for these things. So it's a fade. Yes. It started with this sort of gray color and then it moved into this color right here. And there's another color that was included, but it's, it's like, um, eucalyptus color and i felt like it was too green like anyway i felt like it was too green to go into this so i kind of skipped it and just moved into the next color and then the fourth color because there was four there's five in this blend and now i'm moving into the last color which is this beautiful blue oh my goodness i hope that this shows up looking the way it's supposed to this yarn is all from we crochet this is uh we crochet it's the it's stat the static in the colorway neptune so this is the only full skein I had. And then these other ones are minis. And so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that I will probably, because I had two sets of the minis, that I will probably do a reverse of the colors when it gets, you know, when I get a good width with the dark blue and then I'll just reverse it. This color is just so light and that color is so dark. Maybe once I, you know, do the reverse 
fade, it, it might make more sense to do it that way. I'm not certain. This pattern is one that I am creating as I go. Right now, I'm just calling it two by twos, the actual uh, shawl pattern. I really like how it's coming out. It's very lacy. And I mean, it's very drapey. Very, very, I love this. I love this. I'm really happy with it. The hook is from Mindful Knits. I think all of their hooks have this seafoam, I think, seafoam green. I really like it. So I'm using an H hook with fingering weight yarn. And I'm just as happy as a clam and a bake. So this is my final whip. Oh, oh it looks so pretty in the camera. And I'm feeling much better about my blue looking at it up here. I think it works. I think it works. Okay, that is it for my whips. Next up, the future. I have no future plans. <laughs> I'm currently, what? I'm participating in my hip to be square mal. I am participating in my I love the 80s mal. That's it. Next up, it's time to flip the calendar. Hey, 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 flip the calendar. Uh, uh, uh. I've been waiting for this one. It is what today is the 5th of August. <laughs> Just being truthful here. And I have not flipped this one calendar. All the other ones, you know, throughout the house have been flipped over. Um, but I always wait to do this one with y'all. Are we ready? Oh, please let it be something that just knocks my socks off. What do we think? Can we see it? Green and, and like a mustard color is what is leaping out at me. And of course, the water and the sun. To the jar. This. That's it. And there you go. I also need to take a look at, at Judy's inspiration photo. Um, I thought it was hilarious because I watched Lynn Ann Nina's Knots Crochet when she <laughs> showed the yarn that she was using for her Judy's project. And it was the Pac-Man yarn that I had dyed for the I Love the 80s make along. And she wasn't wrong when she said that those colors <laughs> match that bird. <laughs> So I got just so tickled and I don't know. See, I can't remember what the bird looks like. I just remember what what uh Linian said. Um we'll pop in a photo and if it doesn't work, um, I don't know. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, but I couldn't believe that. That was so funny. I want to say thank you to Judy for just making that work really well. Like her bird is totally 80s. And I said, if I ever saw that bird out in nature, I'm calling it the Pac-Man. I don't know what its real name is or anything like that, but that's absolutely a Pac-Man bird. <laughs> Next up, stuff I got. I didn't get a whole lot this month, which is A-OK -okay, fine. Uh, I had been purchasing um, a three-set mini from... Uh, Sugar Plum Circus, but I didn't get one in July just because I just wasn't feeling it. However, almost as a balance, I guess, kind of a thing, I actually won a prize from the Year of the Sweater Make Along that is hosted by Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique. And I can't remember, somebody else is hosting it with her, and I can't remember her name right off, but I will put it right here. So the prize was a hand dyed mini set, something or rather by Queen's Yarn Boutique because she's a yarn dyer. Let me first start off by saying she asked me what my colors were, you know, my favorite colors and whatnot. And I was like, you know, teal, aqua, robin's egg, Tiffany blue, sea foam, blah, blah, blah. And apparently she didn't have those colors. <laughs> so then it was just like kind of anything but black. So here's what I got.
Now I get tickled because <laughs> even though I never, I never like said, oh, by the way, you know, I'm looking for something for my, I love the eighties Mal. I never said anything of the sort, but I do know that she is also a member of the glam fam. So maybe, you know, just kind of vicariously, she picked up on that, but these colors are perfect. I love this. This is on her reflection sock mini base. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and each skein is 92 yards or 20 grams. And it's a four ply. And I got two of each of these colors. Now this one, it's funny because it kind of looks orange and it kind of looks like a rusty orange but a bright rusty orange, which usually in my head is like a contradiction. <laughs> what does it make me think of? <laughs> Thank you so much, Rochelle. I love these. I, I just, when I, when I opened it, I just, I giggled. I giggled hysterically uh, because I'm a nerd and that's what I do. Oh, I love these. Man, I want to... I told you I want to make another project for the I Love the 80s Mal because I have so much like 80s color fingering weight yarn and I feel like I could do something with all or most of the colors that I have received in the last two years or so. Maybe I will like show you my literal like 80s either 80s inspired or it's named something, you know what I mean? Like those specific yarns and I can show them to you and you'll see what I'm talking about as, and why it's just like, just in bang, 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 banging around in my brain. And how I ended up with a shawl, I don't know, but I think it's just because it was, it was, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've surprised myself with this whole thing. I, I'm just, uh, who am I? Yeah, I, I, this is a journey I'm on to find myself. Really, uh, you see me lost somewhere? Just, just check check my inside coat or sweater or something to see if there's a, a return to label or anything like that. Because I I am I am lost. I I don't I don't know I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am right now. The other thing I got was so amanda who is like i think i'm gonna call her like my yarn sensei right now so amanda is the one that has been dying the i love the 80s yarn for us this year i have to go and visit her etsy shop at least once every two weeks because and she happened to have these two beautiful skeins that I didn't even know we're here. And I feel like she was kind of holding out on me. You know, maybe, maybe it was for my own good. I feel like that's what it is. Amanda cares about me as a person. And therefore she did not want me to be exposed to this thing. However, because algorithms and whatnot, whatnot, it found me. And now it lives here. <laughs> um, I got this one. I can't remember the name of this one, but I got this one because it is like so absolutely neon. Yes, please. 1980s. It's. And then this one, this one is called Aloha. I think this was her colorway for the month of July, but they go together like so nicely. And even though this is, it has more white in it, it still has those hot, the hot pink and the neon yellow and the neon green. So now I have not set these aside, uh, beside my Pac-Man yarns yet. A baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Do you see? I'm tor <gasps> the torture. The to it's torture. Oh, the torture. Oh, my goodness. 
Y'all send help. So those of you who aren't familiar with Amanda, Amanda is the dyer at Falling Leaf Fibers. She is located in South Louisiana. She is located in, is it South Louisiana? She is located in the state of Louisiana. I think she's south of me. I always forget. Anyway, she has a, an Etsy shop and I'll put it right here. She does an amazing job uh, with dyeing and she does an amazing job of doing custom orders, especially. I just asked and she said, how about this? And I said, how about this? And she said, boom and ba bam. So I'm so happy with what we got this year. I'm so happy with the yarns that I got outside of the request because I just originally did a purchase in April because it was national. What was it? It was national local yarn shop day or whatever. And, you know, she is a local, she's as local to me as any other yarn shop in Louisiana. So that's how I found her. And I love the yarn that I gotten from her before. And now with this and this and this, and now it's like, yeah, I, I, I just, <laughs> that is all of the stuff I got. So let us review. Not much got done in July. I am lost and on a journey of discovery. Uh, did a whole lot of, okay, that's it. I didn't do a lot of making, but I did a lot of reacquainting myself with my yarn collection. And it's, it forced me to get yarn out of bags because I had, I had some that were still in like the packaging that it came in just because I didn't have any place to put it. And I didn't want to keep putting things in the closet of shame. By the way, the update on the closet of shame is this. Uh, like 40% of the, 46% of the yarn that 43% of the yarn that lives in the closet of shame has been relocated. And I'm calling that a win. Collectively, the closet of shame is actually the whole room, but there is an actual closet inside of the whole room. And the yarn that you could visibly see when you walked into the room is no longer in there. Now you have to like, you have to go out of your way, extra effort, if you will, to find any yarn in the room. And I feel like if you're going to do that, really, what kind of guest are you? Who goes into somebody's house and then starts searching in the closets? Come on, you don't live here. This isn't an Airbnb. A few moments later. So yeah, uh, I feel accomplished. Uh, I'm proud of that fact. So um, it hasn't been a complete waste, like the whole month or whatever. If you like this video, please do me a favor and like this video. I, I am really hoping that we can get to like 2,000 subscribers by January 10th. That's almost six months, right? Uh, September, October, November, December, January. Okay, so it's five months. Oh, five months. Month, month. Funk. Yeah, so the quest for 2000 starts now. I would like to get to 2000 Glam Thammers. That would be great. What can you do? Well, all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there. And don't forget to rock that notification bell. Until next time, I've been Jackie.